Well, I mean, I think Senator Brown made a good point, which is that she's in this tough re-election fight. She's got to win. Um, but third-party votes don't make sense to me at this level because neither, you know, Stein or Johnson can win. So I can't understand strategically why you would support them mm -hmm. over a uh, Well, the Johnson candidate. ticket has laid out a path to win. So they said if they can get into the debates, get a 15 percent, get to 20 yeah, percent after the first debate. Yeah, it is aspirational. But actually, uh, Governor Johnson has a higher uh, rating from the ACLU than Barack Obama. Obama. You look at they were two uh, Republican governors in blue states, and they ran those well. I mean, so you can understand how you can see that they're getting the support, and that's why they are polling well. But, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, it's, it's hard because Donald Trump has only himself mm -hmm. to blame. All he needs to say is, I'll release my tax returns if she releases her transcripts to Wall Street. He can make it about her and pin it on her. But it's Scott, I understand what he's doing. Senator, is that really yeah. a vote getter, though? Because you no. get into this back and forth about tax returns versus her Goldman Sachs speech transcripts. It's, right. It gets down, again, this, this goes against what we say about Trump. Focus on the issues, focus on the pocketbook, focus on the economy, yeah. focus on what put, you know, makes people's lives better. Sure, that's kind of inside baseball stuff, uh, those things. It uh, goes to you know, credibility and trustworthiness to a very small point. But what people are really talking about are obviously our national security, making sure when they go out, you know, them and their families, they come home safely, dealing with the ISIS threat, getting our economy moving, you know, our debt, deficit, taxes, spending, jobs, national security, immigration. Those are the real big items. I was just in Omaha for the weekend and uh, at a triathlon, and people are coming up to me and say, I'm voting for Trump. And they're kind of looking around, like, make sure no and sees them. So there's an undercurrent that are still very Senator, supportive of him and his efforts. Do you know exactly how fast you were running? How many <laughs> how many miles per hour? Because <laughs> we were talking about Usain yeah. Bolt, and of course you're as fast as he is. Yeah. How did you do, by the way? Yeah, I yeah, I did pretty well. I well, it was probably going 0.8 miles an hour. <laughs> okay. uh, it, it, it was an honor to be there, and he's an, he's amazing. I'm 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 wondering whether he's coming back again. You know, which is kind of never cool know, to think never about. know. Hey, but I do want to talk about money at this point in the game because sure. Paul Manafort says Trump's campaign's brought in a hundred million dollars in donations. Yeah. But new numbers show that he's not getting much help from congressional Republicans. When you dial that down, he's only received two donations totaling just over three thousand dollars from Congress. Congress as of June 30th. This is uh, all these numbers are coming from yep. OpenSecret.org Center sure. for Responsive Politics. So, so what does that tell you? It tells you, it tells you that he's not part of the establishment. That's why he's doing so well. People don't want an insider, someone like Hillary Clinton, who's going to go down and continue on with these failed policies. People don't trust the people in Washington, and there are some great people there. But the majority of them, the Chuck Schumers, the Harry Reeds of the world, you know, they're out for their petty personal partisan interests and not for our country's interests. And that's what people are fighting against. So that doesn't bother me at all. Governor Pence, well, we, we led at the top of the hour with Governor Pence saying saying it's still early. He said it twice. Is it still right. early? I mean, we're in the middle of August here. The election's yeah, coming up are, pretty fast. Right. Yeah, you're in the middle of August, and that's right. People really don't start in, in politics, especially you know, in, in the Northeast and other parts of the country, until uh, once the kids get back to school and once they really start focusing, okay, here we go, you know, well, we've got to get cracking. So, yeah, ob obviously August, mm -hmm. I think you're going to kind of muddle through it, but then things are going to pick up pretty heavily. All right, and then Kevin Kelly, uh, big foreign policy, policy speech by Donald Trump is expected today and uh, could be a big moment for his campaign. Yeah, this is where he can actually separate himself and finally overtake all of his concerns about traditional media. Uh, and so I think he really needs to focus on Hillary Clinton and what she's done as Secretary of State. He, she, he actually has a great opportunity here to do that. So, Senator Brown, what do you think he's going to highlight in this speech today when it comes to that topic? Yeah, well, that's easy. Obviously, he's going to identify who our enemy is, first of all. He's going to try to rally the like-minded allies throughout the world and the region to try to join forces and really zero in on, on, on the threat. Remember, Hillary Clinton didn't designate Boko Haram a terrorist organization. It took John Kerry to do that. And, and I agree with Donald Trump when he says that uh, he said it differently than I said it, and I've said it on your show many times. It's because Barack Obama didn't leave a transition force, a quick reaction force in Iraq that left that vacuum that allowed 
criminal and terrorist elements to reestablish themselves in Iraq. Uh, Al -Qaeda, ISIS is Al Qaeda of, of Iraq just morphed into a, 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 a battle uh, brigade uh, larger than New England. And so that's where it started. And that also, Syria, that line, when he did nothing, that emboldened Putin, that, that uh, emboldened the Chinese, that emboldened those terror threats. And then the deal with Iran. I mean, he's done a terrible job, and she is so tied in with those failures that, absolutely right, he has a chance to distinguish himself. And that's why people like him better. He's got to follow through, though. You will admit, because he gives he's a big speech. Point. Yeah. Again, it's not just how he comes out of the blocks. He's got to have momentum and stay stay on point. Not yeah, tomorrow, just, but the rest of the week and yeah. the rest of the election season. Yeah, Dagan, you're right. He's got to let the speech speak for itself and then go out and let surrogates and others talk, talk about it. And you're right. When it comes to national security and world security, that's why people uh, want something different than the Hillary Clinton failure has been. Speaking Gazi, of coming Syria, out of the blocks and running fast, yeah. uh, you probably don't even remember this or know this, but I ran behind you for a congressional three mile yeah, yeah, along the Potomac River once. And I told you this when we were doing Outnumbered. And the guys at Fox News told me, Sandra, to win, we just need you to run sub eight minute miles and you'll win it, which I did. <laughs> <laughs> for the news division, and and but I ran well under that. Thank you. Uh, but you Senator Brown was ahead of me. I saw Brown on the back of your shirt. I was like, wow, you are really fast. So I hope you had a good uh, well, weekend and a good triathlon. It was fine. A lot, a lot of great people. It was uh, congratulations, Omaha, for doing such a great job. That's as far as my compliments will go this morning. All right, Senator Scott Brown, <laughs> thank okay. you very much. Good to have Thanks, you. Thanks, guys. Do you